Oh yeah? Well, who do you think you are? No, this isn't that kind of show. I'm not just going to walk around here all oiled up in a thong leotard for your enjoyment. It's not that kind of program. This is a classy show for classy people. But no, no, totally do not, you cannot talk to me that way. Who do you think you are? Boy, you got a pretty mouth. Well, howdy party people and space cadets, and welcome to the Galactic Happy Hour. I'm your host, Spider Island Slim, and on this week's episode, we'll be talking about five more of my favorite classic LJN Thundercats figures, because that was a really great line, even with all the action features, which I'll get into in a little bit. And number five on the list is the Tusca Warrior from 1986. And this was released in series two and three. And he was basically a walrusy guy, or walrusy guys. It's, uh, I guess, a army building kind of figure. But an, a walrusy guy in a green and tan outfit. And that tan parts of the outfit perfectly matched his face. You know, I always say that people just don't wear enough flesh colored clothing that just perfectly match their outfits. But the Tusca Warrior came with a big green and silver Gatling gun. And his action feature was a lever on his back that allowed him to draw his gun. And as I've said before many, many times, I did not like action features. To me, the action features, that was the tool of the kid with no imagination. It's like, come on, man. I can make him lift his arm by myself. I don't need a lever to do it. But either way, this was a great toy line, even with the action features. And speaking of this toy line, LJN. I know they have kind of a bad rap in the video game community, but as far as toys went, some fantastic toys came from LJN. The Thundercats, and most of all, the Dungeons and Dragons toy line. I mean, that was one of my favorites as a kid, and LJN. So I always look at that little rainbow LJN logo fondly. Now, the Tusca Warriors weren't memorable characters per se, but I just liked the figures, and I liked playing with them. And I remember one time, don't remember what exactly the game was, I don't think it was Thundercats, playing with my Tusca Warrior in the kitchen sink. Oops, ice maker. But playing with the Tusca Warrior in the kitchen sink with the dirty dishes. Yep, that's a sanitary game right there. And a piece of trivia about the Tusca Warrior, his gun was actually a repaint of a gun from the Doom toy line, which LJN made as well. Now, I don't remember those Doom figures very well, but I don't remember them being the same size as the Thundercats. So that must have been a ginormo gun to go with those, but I could be wrong. That has happened once or twice over the years. Next. Yeah, I have to say, my refrigerator is so loud. Like, I could just hear it right now, making ice, even though I turned the ice maker off, and it is driving me crazy. As I was saying, number four on the list, and that's Slythe from 1985. Released in every series of Thundercats, Slythe, with three S's, mind you, was a froggy, snaggy, lizardy kind of Playboy-type character. And like with many cases, especially with the bad guys, not so much the good guys, but the bad guys, the toy looked better than the cartoon counterpart. I don't know what it is, and I've talked about this a little bit before. The Thundercats themselves didn't look as good as they did on the cartoon. But the Evil Mutants, in most cases, looked better than they did on the cartoon. It's very odd the way that worked. I almost wonder if LGN was like, yeah, bad guys are more fun. We're going to put more into them. Who knows? But in two ways. He came with a big, crusty axe and featured the exact same action feature as the Tusca Warrior, a lever on the back that made his arm go up and down. Again, not something I ever used, because I think I mentioned that I didn't care for action features. Didn't I? Didn't I? I did. Uh, where was I? But yes, Slive. Interesting thing about Slive, and this is the Slive trivia, in the series, the cartoon, his name only had one S, so why did they add the S, the two extra S's, for the toy? Trademark reasons? Conspiracy? 
something having to do with the lizard men that run the government? I am not at liberty to say. But either way, I had a lot of fun with this figure. Um, I liked the character. I liked the toy. Got a whole lot of use, and he worked well in a lot of different toy lines. Ugh, ice maker! He ugh, lost my train of thought. But yeah, he just worked really well because since he was a weird Lizzie Froggy mutiny thing, Lizzie, Lizardy mutant froggy thing, he could have been just about anything. A mutant on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or all kinds of stuff, an alien. Well, I guess he was an alien. They were all aliens to Third Earth. Really makes you think. Number three on the list is Top Spinner from 1986. And Top Spinner was released in the second and third series as well, and he was a Viking-esque, cyborg -y robot pirate, as is often the case. Though, according to L-Storm, Vikings and pirates don't get on too well. Listen to me, I said get on too well. I've been watching a lot of British sitcoms. First it was Plebes, and from Plebes I went to Friday Night Dinner, and now I'm watching Coupling. I just love those, and it's starting to wear off a little bit. Where was I? Oh yes, so Top Spinner, like I said, a Viking-esque cyborg -y robot pirate with kind of a big robot-y bottom leg basey kind of thing, um, came with an attached mace and shield. Though, if it's attached, does it count as an accessory? If it doesn't come off? I don't think so. I think that was just part of him. So I'm going to say he came with no accessories because they were attached. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments above, not the ones below. But he was a berserker, which it was a subset of the Thundercats, which had play features. But for once, the play features really worked and were really cool here. And basically with Top Spinner, he had a levery thing on his back, lower back, I guess more toward his feet. And when you did it, his torso spun around like a tornado-y thing. I thought that was really cool. And now, yeah, and I got a lot of play out of him. And I don't think much of it was him as Top Spinner himself, just as a random, weird, robot-y, cyborg -y, pirate, viking guy. And a piece of Top Spinner trivia, he only actually had two appearances in the animated series. That's it. And on that, I think we should take some kind of break. Here comes the Go Bob Command Center. Your parents put it together. Go. You can change it to a Landwalker and a Mighty Fortress. Nine-volt battery not included. Go Bob sold separately. Enemy go by the talking. Now it attacks for master control. Leader one, try and conquer the world now. You are grounded, cop tour. The Gobot Command Center. Leader one and cop tour each sold separately. New from Tonka. And we're back with the horoscope of the week. And on this week's horoscope goes to Leo. Leo, someone close to you will win the lottery but they will cut you out of their life. Now that they're rich, they no longer need to put up with your inappropriate Captain Planet fan fiction. And number two on the list is Mumra in his mummy form from 1986. And this was released in the second and third series of figures. Mummy Mumra was just that. He was his mummy form before he transformed using the ancient spirits of evil. This was interesting case because he was never released carded. He was a mail-away figure, or he came with that awesome, awesome Mummy Mumra Tomb Ancient Spirits of Evil thing playset. Oh man, I wanted that one so bad, but just never ended up getting that one. I think it was kind of obscure, at least in my hometown, because I don't remember ever seeing it in the store, and I don't remember ever seeing anyone with it. But I had the mail-away version, even though I wanted that playset. As far as accessories go, he came with a creepy-looking black staff with kind of a goaty demony head thing that had a nice, friendly smile. Now, something I really liked about this figure, he had almost no articulation. And I think I've mentioned one or two or 12 times before that I am not a big fan of articulation in figures. And with this mummy mumra, his head moved and his arms moved. And that was it. And no play features, nothing like that. So this was just a great, very me-friendly figure. And he got a lot of use as just a generic mummy a monster and very heavy metal-esque kind of imaginary games. He was a great heavy metal-esque sorcerer type thing. And let me tell you, I loved, loved me some heavy metal, the film, as a kid. So I would often just make up my own little kind of post-apocalyptic sword and sorcery and future Thundar-esque games. And yeah, that Mumra, he really fit really well into those. 
Now, the piece of trivia about Mumra, I'm going to be giving you guys a little piece of trivia on every figure I talk about today. But his trivia was, as I said, he was a Meloway figure. And the way you got him was six points, which you collect the points off the backs of the boxes of the other figures you bought. So he cost six points and $1.25 for shipping and handling. You can't beat that with a black smiling demon stick. No, sir. We bought it. And number one on the list is Hammerhand from 1986. And he was another one that was released in both series one, or series two and three. And a lot of these were released in series two and three. Wow. But Hammerhead was also a cyborgy Viking pirate with a giant robot hand. And boy, did he rock some yellow pants. I am envious even to this day of those yellow pants that he was rocking. Now, he didn't come with any accessories, but he didn't need them. Like with the other Berserkers, he had the cool play feature, which was his giant hand that could grab stuff. And he had that long, cool gray hair and beard and his Viking helmet. He was just awesome. Talk about a great character design. And another one that looked way better in the toy form than he did on the cartoon. Now, I don't remember if I got him or Top Spinner first, but I was just such a big, big fan of both those figures. And another great one for some post-apocalyptic, heavy metal, inappropriate gameplay, or not inappropriate gameplay, inappropriate heavy metal watching game fun play. Now, a piece of trivia about old good old Hammerhand, and this is actually not about the figure, but about the cartoon itself, but he actually died in his first appearance on the show, but later Mumra brought him back to possess Panthro in that very famous Thundercats episode, Like Father, Like Son, which starred Judge Reinhold and Erdward Furlong. Erdward. Edward Furlong. Well, that's all the time we have this week. Please like, comment, subscribe, and may your pants always be filled with action-featured marshmallows. I almost said marshmallows. What's a marshmallow? I think mushmouth ate marshmallows. Maybe.